Hi plebs, today we're going to look at how to use the system.perspective.print function to print inside of our um, Python resource API endpoints. Why you would want to print, you may ask. Well, when you're designing these endpoints, they can start out simple, like the last endpoint we created, just to read a tag value. But as you get more and more comfortable working with them, they become more complicated, and sometimes you need to debug um, your endpoints and see what's going on uh, and see why you're getting the values you're getting. And let me show you why it's not very simple. It's not as simple as just using the system.perspective.print function in a perspective view, for example. So if we go to our web dev here, let's create a new API endpoint. Um, so printing. I'll just call it printing. Um, and it's a Python resource. And let's choose do get here and demonstrate the issue I'm talking about. So system.perspective.print hello. If you did this inside of a inside of a perspective view, this will print hello in your in your browser console. But let's save this and I'll show you what it does because uh, the web dev module is a bit different than the perspective module. So let me save that. Let me, oops, launch my resource. And we get an error. First time I got this error, I was very confused why, um, what this error meant. But then I did some more digging. And this is another reason why I wanted to make the videos because I couldn't find that much information on it. It might be obvious to some people, uh, but it took me a little bit to figure this out, so I wanted to share this in case somebody else had this sort of question. If you if you look up the perspective.print function in the documentation, um, it actually has more than one parameter. So if you use this function in a perspective view, you're used to just passing in a, a message and it returning correctly. But in a web dev resource, it's a bit different. You need to specify a, a session ID. And this last sentence, sentence here is important. If you specify a session ID, you must also specify a page ID. We'll see what happens if you don't. It'll just throw another message. But this sentence here, when targeting a different session, the page ID parameter must be also included. So we can just add these two parameters. And we will hopefully be able to print at the end of this video. Okay, so our message, our format, my function call this way just for readability's sake. Uh, our session ID will be, it's usually an alphanumeric string, and our page ID will be another string. Okay. So, where you get your session and your page IDs from? Let's cover that next. Uh, if you installed the perspective module, when you are installing your either maker edition or regular ignition on the trial version, or if you have the full license. Um, if you click on this perspective module and go to your session props, you should have an ID here that you can copy and paste. So let me copy this. Oops. Cancel. So there we have our session ID. Okay, now to get a page ID, you need to have a view to get a page ID. And it makes sense that way. Um, a page corresponds to a tab in a browser. So if you were um, trying to log something into the browser's console, let me show you an example of the browser's console. If you hit your F12 key and hit the and go to your console message here, so if a page corresponds to um, a tab that may not be the correct term, technical term that Ignition uses, but I figured uh, how I figured it out anyway, it usually corresponds to a tab and your session is your browser session here. And then your view would be if you would have an embedded view or a page um, would be your view. If you're familiar with the system perspective send message, those, those are the scopes I'm talking about. Uh, 
So if you were trying to log an error message, it doesn't really make sense to log it just to the session. You actually want to log it to a specific tab, right? So that's why that's where the page ID comes in to play. So for that, you need to create a perspective view. Let's call this testing. Uh, I like flex container types the best or the most. So I'm going to create this view here. Um, let me put in an iframe or some other text. Let's also put in a text field. Okay, so this text field, this iframe, usually what I do is I create a custom endpoint or a web page like this. And then I can right click on index.html copy path and then go back to my iframe and add it as a source. And that way you embed your your web, your custom web uh, components into, into your page. Or so what I wanted to use this text was to bind it to the page props page ID property here. So actually, <coughs> the page ID in a designer will be different than the page ID of an actual page in your browser. So if you if you save this, and let's hit tools launch session. Um, let me go back to my designer, I don't know if I added a path to it. No, I didn't. So be testing. Uh, there we go. So let me save this. Go back here and just add testing. You see that the page ID is actually different. So in the designer, once again, let's go back to my page. Uh, the page ID is testing. But in an actual session, it's a it's an alphanumeric string. So let's copy this here. Copy. Let's go back to our printing API endpoint. Add this here. Okay. Now that we have our session ID and our page ID, we should be able to save this. Control S. Go back here. Um, target this again. And. Let's hit our console. And it's not in here. Because the page is not found. Mm -hmm. Oh. So, I think I know why. I think the, the designer session and the actual session session, I think those are two different things. So I believe this designer or the session ID from the designer will be different. So let me actually, I think I know what's happening. Let me drag another one of these on. And for this text, I'm going to again, bind a property, but this time I'll go to session props and add my ID. So we can see that it ends in BBF3, which I believe is the one that I have here, BBF3. But let's save and then re... So you can see here that the session is actually different. Mm, let me close this console. Copy this one. It's not going to be this cumbersome. Um, I'll show you how to dynamically get your session ID and your page ID. It'll basically come from the bindings that I showed previously, but you won't need to specify this every time. Uh, you can pass it in as a URL parameter and that helps with not having to run through all these steps to get the session and the page IDs. Well, let's go back here and refresh this message. And we see that we did in fact print because we executed the hello world uh, returning the HTML hello world as we see here. So we know that this should have executed successfully and if we go back here to our uh, to our session and then to our page, if we hit the F12 key, uh, we can see our message here. Okay, so what if what if you want to get your session ID and your page ID 
um, dynamically and not have to run through and jump through those loopholes that I just went through and almost failed, but then I remembered something. <laughs> so uh, you can pass these um, as a URL to your iframe. So let's actually copy this. Um, well, actually, let me get this URL here and copy it and then go back to my view, my perspective view. And I have this iframe component here. Let me paste that URL. Okay, it's rendering my hello world here, just like it was in the browser. So I want to pass in this page ID and the session ID. I want to pass both of those into, into my iframe. So the way you can do it, you can do it multiple ways. You can either pass it in as, um, well, actually, if you have an iframe, there's pretty much one way to do it unless you use messages and some, the easiest way to do it essentially is to pass it in as a parameter here. So let's actually bind, let's copy this text. Um, it's going to change a little bit. Let's copy this text and create an expression here. And let's see, let's concatenate a few properties. So there we go. Um, so those are placeholders. Let me paste this text or this URL here. Let me add my question mark for my parameter and then specify my, or, well, actually, let me do it on this line. Let me specify my parameter, question mark, I'll call it session ID. What you call it is important, um, and you'll see why when you try to extract it from, um, from your receiving end, from your API. So you're passing this uh, URL, this URL is going to your API here, and it's returning whatever this API endpoint is returning. Okay, so here's your session ID, and then you want to bind it to your session ID property. So session props, and then hit ID here. And then you want to do same thing for your page ID. Um, but instead of doing the question mark, uh, which denotes the start of your URL parameters, you do an ampersand. So shift seven, I'll call this page ID equals and then include your page ID. So this is a similar property. Uh, yeah, go to page props and then page ID here. So let's hover over this expression and yes, yeah, so you can see how it says page ID equals testing. I can't point to it because I'm hovering, but that will change once we're in an actual session. So let's hit okay here and Okay, so let's hit okay and then let's go back to our printing API endpoint. And then, so, so how do you extract the URL parameters, you may ask? Well, uh, we have these arguments here. Request um, data is something we used for our tag path. There's also a request.params, which is a dictionary of your URL parameters. So let's comment this out here. Oops. Um, Select this, control forward slash. So your request params is your dictionary that holds your session ID and your page ID. So let's create a variable called session ID is equal to this. And then your, your URL parameter name. So this is important, this here must match your URL parameter, which in our case it does here, session ID. Same thing with the page ID. So session ID is that, page ID will equal, same thing essentially, request params, and then page ID. Okay, so now that we have Okay, so let's test this out right away. Mm. Let's paste our code here. 
uncomment this, tab back, and instead of specifying it, let's add it dynamically. There we go. Page ID, there we go. So our page ID, our session ID is coming from here, which is coming from our URL parameter. Our page ID is coming from here, which is coming from another URL parameter. You have to be careful with URL parameters because um, to pass in a value by a URL parameter, uh, it needs to be URL encoded. So special characters like spaces and uh, forward and backslashes, those need to be URL encoded. For example, I believe a space is a percent 20, percent to zero. So it's a special character. Um, so, but since our session ID and our page ID are just alphanumeric strings, uh, I didn't worry about URL encoding on the on the perspective side and then decoding it on the API endpoint side. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's go back to our session here and uh, refresh and then check our log and we see that it's printing hello. Let's change the message in case in case it's just remembering our last message from when we printed earlier. So I will, let me refresh and we see our message here. So we're passing in our session session ID here and our page ID automatically or dynamically into our iframe. Our iframe has a source which is pointing to our API endpoint. Our API endpoint is returning this HTML code here, but we wanted to debug. We wanted to use uh, system.perspective.print to debug our API endpoint. Of course, to use print, um, your API endpoint would be a lot more complicated than this. And you can also use a return statement. So copy this uh, and return it before and just see what it returns to debug that way. But if you want to use print and print in the console, this is the method that you should use or that I've used in the past and I know works. So, well, I hope that helped someone. Um, I almost lost it there in the middle until I remembered what I was trying to do. Uh, if you have questions, leave comments in the comments section below. Let me know what other videos I should make. I'm pretty open to making whatever um, the Ignition community would want to see. Also, if I'm doing something incorrectly, if there are more efficient ways of doing anything that I'm doing in, in my videos, uh, let me know. Part of the reason why I wanted to make videos in the first place was so that I can grow as a developer and learn how to write better code and create better perspective views. So thanks for watching. I hope I hope that helped somebody.